This is my old tripod, or current tripod, I suppose. And it's an old Manfrotto tripod. It's actually pretty good as a photography tripod, but for videography, it's eh, pretty not great. One of the big problems with it is it doesn't actually go all that high. And to go low, well, you gotta adjust these six knobs. Make sure you lock them enough so that they don't slide. Uh, and the footprint print for it is huge. I've got about a metre between the legs. So it ends up being difficult to get some shots, like behind the workbench. I actually have to feed it through the legs of the workbench to get close enough. So instead of investing in a new tripod or a video tripod, which are quite expensive and only address a few of those issues, but still take up quite a lot of footprint and are slow to adjust up and down, I've built this. This is similar to, and is based off Jeremy Smith's video camera stand, uh, but there are a few key differences. One, I don't have full articulation because it's not really something that I need. Instead, I've got this sliding mechanism to give me the length that I want. For the height adjustment, I'm actually just using a wooden screw, which lets me get much higher and much lower much, much quicker. Eventually, I'll be adding a few other bits and pieces to it, including a counterweight, which will make raising and lowering the whole mechanism quite easy, as well as addressing some of the issues with the wheels. I started by ripping down the plywood to form the box for the concrete, which will Form the weighted base. This angle highlights the need to move away from a tripod when the fence easily gets in the way. Everything is just butt joined together with nails and glue. It really just has to contain the concrete, not be overly structural. So this is where I'm up to with the base. I've got three coats of polyurethane on the base frame and I attach some casters. These are big casters. And this is the reason why I went with the design I've gone for, which is just a box rather than Jeremy's design. Uh, if we, I'll flip this around. So you can see, hopefully, the circles here, let's see, of where I'd need to carve out uh, how Jeremy had with all the mitres to allow for these to swing internally. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't result in a lot of material left behind. And as a consequence, the internal volume of this would be quite low, which would mean less concrete, which would then in turn mean less weight and less stability. So I've gone with this design, it's fine. I wanna use these particular casters because from past experience, I know this size works really well on this garage floor. I've got those expansion lines, whatever they are in the concrete, uh, as well as it just being really uneven. So that allows me to easily move this without it getting caught and then tipping over. I'm not going to concrete in the post itself. Uh, I'm going to use this aluminium fence post. These are uh, not super expensive, not super cheap, uh, but there's a couple of reasons for using it. One, it's tall enough. It's readily available from Bunnings. It's got a flange on it and it's black. So it's already pre-coated so I don't have to paint it. So all those things sort of work out well for me. The flange has uh, 12 millimeter holes, it might be 10 millimeter holes. So I'm gonna get some galvanized threaded rod, cut that up, bolt that through the plywood and then silicon that in, then pour the concrete then I'll be able to screw this onto those uh, threaded rods sticking out the concrete and it'll be very secure. I don't actually do concreting, so this mix was way too wet. With the warmer weather at the moment, however, it did eventually set. Again, it's not overly structural, so even if it's not the strongest or the prettiest, it'll do for this purpose. This is just a pre-mixed bag of concrete, not quick set. While that dried, I could rip down the plywood to make an eye beam. I mean, sure, this was several months ago and has been floating around the workshop for a while, but for the purposes of narrative, let's pretend this was sequential. Once that was cut, the top and bottom pieces received a shallow dado to insert 
in the vertical piece. If I was to do this again, I'd use 12 millimeter plywood as 18 millimeter is just overly large and heavy for an I-beam as it already has ridiculous strength. The horizontal guide which houses the rollers is just simple butt joins with screws. So everything just needed to be ripped, cross cut and pre-drilled. So this is where I'm up to with the horizontal sliding mechanism. The other five holes I've already attached the wheel, so I've got a wheel, a lock nut and a bolt that goes through. The reason for the lock nut is uh, when the I-beam is inserted there's not really enough room for a double nut. I could use thread locker but a nylock nut is a little bit easier because we need it uh, tight enough that it won't wobble around but also loose enough that it will still spin quite freely. Uh, there, it's still too wobbly. Yep, that's pretty good there. So that works over the full range of motion. Uh, there'll be little stops put in eventually so that it can't slide too far. The reason for the six wheels, that's three per side, is that if I didn't have this lower wheel, uh, once you reach a certain point, the weight of the I-beam would force it to go down. Uh, and this would then jam inside the box. So that bottom wheel forces it to go de to stay straight. Uh, so there's no binding issue there. Uh, the bottom wheels are probably a little bit tight. So it does stop this from sliding very easily. Uh, freely, I should say. It slides quite easily, just not freely. So I could, uh, if I had spaces, like eccentric spaces, the uh, CNC uses, I could adjust it that way. I could sand down the wheels a little bit, or I could drill new holes just a couple of millimeters up uh, so that it goes smoothly or freely, I should say. But for now, that's actually pretty fine. Uh, perhaps if I was to motorize it down the track, I'd need to look into that. The vertical guide that wraps around the post was made in the same manner, just a little bit skinnier. The major difference is that it receives a 35mm hole on one side so that I could tap it with an inch and a half 6 TPI tap. As I wasn't super happy with the construction of the vertical guard, I didn't want to directly glue it onto the horizontal member. I may remake it down the track. Instead, I glued and screwed on two strips to increase the overall bearing surface on the horizontal slide. The space between the two strips is to clear the bolts from the rolled wheels. I'm using a fluid video head and the standard for mounting them is a 3 8 inch bolt. So as I said, this isn't perfect. Uh, there are a few key issues I'd like to address in the future. Uh, the weight of this is more than what I thought it was going to be. That's not really an issue. I can move it up and down quite easily. Um, but I could make it easier. What I want to do is put a pulley up here and have a counterweight inside the tube. So the problem is I need to find something that is skinny enough, but dense enough that I can get the right weight. 
lead lining uh, for cladding type stuff is probably the best choice, but that stuff's actually quite expensive. So for now, I'm not going with that. Uh, I'll look into different options. This is one of the wheels that I've used and unfortunately it's a light up type wheel, which means there are some irregularities in the surface of the wheel. And as I'm sliding this, I can feel it catch on some of them. So I don't know whether I need to reduce the diameter of the lower wheels that sort of tension the whole thing, or whether it's gonna be an inherent problem with this type of wheel. Perhaps something like aluminum extrusion and roller bearings that go on the V grooves would have been a better choice, but ultimately that would have been more expensive. Um, so I was reluctant to do it. All this plywood came from the computer case build I did a few months back. So essentially it was free plywood because the cost was already sunk into that. However, I am super excited for this. Uh, it is quite stable. So, you know, at its extremity, it's not going to fall over. I have a huge range of motion. So from the post, it is about 800 millimeters. So that allows me to do shots over the table saw, but more importantly, over the workbench and over other tools to get what I want. So though this is not perfect, it does give me a platform to build a few things upon, and it is a big step up from the tripod. This was relatively inexpensive all up. I've probably got $100, $120 invested in it. The casters were $40 of that, so not, not a huge amount of money when a basic tripod would set me back at least $200. There's still a few bits and pieces I want to do to this. I want to paint it black so it looks more like professional video equipment. For the adjustment screw, I want to use this giant Allen key, so I just need to make a socket head cap screw. Uh, in little bits and pieces, but I'm really happy with this, and hopefully it'll open up some better angles for videos. Thanks for watching.